Hey guys, it's Bang for Bar PC Gaming here, and I'm about to try out the PC Building Simulator. Now, this is a simulator game that allows you to build PCs. Also, um, basically, live as a technician. You take on jobs, um, doing basically work for various clients, and then you, you make money, etc. But here, I'm going to just do a free build, just to try it out, see how it works. And this generally takes you through the process of building a PC. So. I have two free sashes to work with. Um, I kind of like the traditional kind of mid tower build. So this is a NZXT SR, well S340 black and red. So um, as you can see to my right, there's PC status says missing parts, which means it's not fit to boot up at the moment. But we already knew that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by removing what's necessary before I can start my build. So I'm gonna remove two screws holding the front side panel. Then I'll go around to the back and remove two screws holding the back side panel. Now I want to remove the PSU mount bracket, so four screws here. And then the bracket itself and the front panel and the dust filter. So now we're pretty much fit to start the build. So just looking at the case I can see you can house one, two, three, four, 140 or 120 millimeter fans, which is nice. And there's a three and a quarter inch hard drive bay, which can hold two hard drives in the in the basement of the case, and also two two and a half inch um, SSDs can be um, placed in the the bottom of the case. So I pretty much know what I can build at this time so I want to go ahead and go to the install and this is where you can pick the pieces of hardware I'm going to start off with uh, the case fans start off with cooling so I'm going to go with two 140 millimeter Arctic Bionics um, F140 red fans in the front so it's going to give you a better look you can zoom in Everything seems rather well modelled. Zoom out a bit. So that's fine. I'm also going to install another. But this should give the case good airflow. Good intake of air in the front of the case. That should cool all the components. I also want to put one in the back as well. But we'll do that a little later. So I'm going to install the motherboard next. Let's see now we have X37, so that's Ryzen I believe. And we have 1151 which is Coffee Lake. We also have X399 which is, um, sorry, forgot about it for one second so the Fred Ripper platform you also have here and we also have um, 1151 Cabby Lake as well so we've got the Z270 chipset and the Z37 so I'm going to go with the Coffee Lake I'm trying to see what colors I have here I don't really, really want to break the scheme I think I'll go with the uh, Gigabyte Aorus looks okay actually. Out of all of them, I'll go with the Gigabyte Aorus. This looks okay. Doesn't look like it's going to clash with the build. So, just installing the standoffs now into the, the case. So, this is what the motherboard is going to be sitting on. And it allows it to stop it from shorting out. So, make sure all screws are connected to the standoffs. So that way, uh, the motherboard is earthed basically. I count nine screws. Let's have a quick look around. It automatically put the the back panel on for you. This is generally one of the most annoying things about PC building. You sometimes you'll forget to put this thing on, build your whole rig, and then you realize, oh damn, I forgot to put this on. And it literally means you have to tear it apart, which is like the worst thing. 
but nothing to worry about here everything's fine let's get on with the power supply now I think I'll go with an 850 possibly don't need anything too crazy most I'll go with is a 1000 watt let's see what we have here 750 1200 yeah, I mean, uh, a fully modular 1100 watt should pretty much suffice for all our needs. So we'll get that installed in. Let's uh, get it secured. Put the PC mount back on. And now the four screw is holding it in place, so it's like got extra security so it's very very well secured okay so we can do a few we can attach a few cables now let's start off with the motherboard uh, the motherboard power supply let's get that installed first so what I need to do is click cable and then you can start connecting the cable so this one now provided power to the motherboard you also need to do the one the power supply cable up here which is at the top so we'll click on that and then we click on the, the power supply so that's connected as well and the front panel we also need to connect so we can turn the thing on so technically we could turn the PC on right now put the power plug in but uh, without RAM, CPU, it's not going to post. So let's go ahead and get that done. So next thing I want to do is I'm going to put in some memory. Before I can do that, um, it's probably best that I open up all of the hinges. We won't be able to get the memory in. So this uses, can have up to four, four DIMMs in there, which is nice. Let's also uh, remove the PCI lock as well while we're here. May go for an SLI or Crossfire setup. So we have to remove two top and two, basically the two middle um, brackets. So that's it for now let's go ahead and install some more parts let's go with the processor so we're on the Kaby Lake Z370 chipset so naturally we're gonna go for the Core i7-8700K fantastic processor by the way only problem is it only has six cores but a very very capable processor and very very good overclocker so I'll get this closed now and also let's get the memory installed so we want to go for something nice DDR4 see what the maximum speed we have here so 3200 megahertz is the highest I've seen but let's look for something red if possible so we have DDR4 at 3000 yeah, so megahertz seems to be the highest we can go so let's go with it so this is a 16 gigabyte kit but we're going to install 32 gigabytes we may as well just max it out since we don't really have a budget that we're working with at the moment that's looking good so far now let's have a look at what coolers we have Let's put the, the thermal paste on before I forget. That's something that may cause an issue. So look at that the cooling we can select. Probably just uh, fans and heat sinks. No AIOs from what I can see. Which is a bit of a shame. But we may as well go with um, the dual Arctic freezer, huge, huge CPU heatsink, so be awesome for overclocking. This cables, let's connect 
uh, the fans. So that's been connected. Don't think you need to do one from the back. No, that's fine. Okay. So, so far, the airflow is going to be smooth through the case and straight out the back. See if we can put a fan at the back of the, the motherboard. And also, while we're at it, we may as well do a few more fans, connect a few more fans if possible. Seems both are connected, I don't see any issues here. See if we can install one more fan at the back. No, only at the top. So we're going to leave that out. We don't really want to change the direction of the airflow. And we're going to go with graphics cards now. And may as well recreate it in my image as much as possible. So let's go with dual GTX 1080 Ti's Gaming X's from MSI if they have them on here, which I think they do. Here we go. So we're going to try and put in two of these. Look at the size of this card, it's pretty much two 2.5 slots. So it would be questionable if we can get another one in. Don't think we can. No, it's just. It's just not big enough, unfortunately. So that's not possible. So we'll just leave it with a single card for now. And just get that hooked up. Let's do another one. So that's all good. So we've got the power supply for the motherboard, GPUs being secured. Let's put back in, let's see if we've got a sound card if possible. No, we can't do that. So we may as well put back the PCI bracket. So it's the PCI lock. And also, um, may as well put back some PCI covers because we're not going to, we're not going to need to use this space so I may as well get them blocked back up so that's fine and the PCI cover for the last one so that is all done it's looking good so far let's uh, install some storage shall we so what do we have here 4 terabyte HDD put that in there no problem and install some SSDs as well so 250 gigabyte SSD I've got a 500 gigabyte HDD but that's not what we want so let's put in two of these go back and now let's just uh, power these up so That's powered, and now let's uh, put a data cable on there as well. It's not the most accurate cabling system, it has to be said. Really struggling here to uh, to attach this cable, so I'm going to connect one of these to the motherboard. So let's do the top and bottom. Let's get the power out of the way first. Right. And finally the data cable. If it will finally allow me to select it. Let's put it on top of here. So it's two done and finally let's do the HD uh, hard drive as well. cable. It allows me. Should have a SATA cable that needs to go in but doesn't seem to be allowing me to select it for whatever reason. Okay, so let's 
and that's all done in terms of wiring up the hardware that seems good to go shame about the fans I wish I could add some more Let's just double check if there's any more loose cables around the system none that I can see so let's uh, start collecting uh, the cables for the VGA mouse and keyboard we're gonna need a boot device as well so let's see what they have in tools they have a USB drive probably has the OS on it so let's just get that put in and so let's install some missing parts so side panel do the screws now clean that out a bit let's uh, so do the dust filter for the front and also front panel and finally side panel so that is looking good now so we have to install the OS now everything's plugged in let's power it on see if it boots It seems to be installing the OS. All right, this one's ready to boot. So we have successfully created a PC. Still have a few bits of a bit of work to do in terms of how the cables look, but it's pretty fun to work with. So we've got all our fans hooked up. It looks real nice with the, the lighting scheme all red and black which it looks pretty cool with an 8700k that's actually a very very nice build i'd be proud to own that so we've got 512 gigabytes of ssd beast of a cooler here so it should be able to overclock the cpu no problem a bit unfortunate about the rear fan but maybe we ran out of fan headers who knows but um looking good i like it so that was a quick look at uh, PC Simulator. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching.